Welcome to an educational presentation from Pastiche Distance Learning. Pastiche Training is a distance learning and educational provider that has been created to help extend the knowledge base of all people who work within the skin treatment industry and allied professions. Today's specialty class covers the different categories of scar tissue commonly seen by today's skin diagnostician, skin treatment therapist or corneotherapist. We begin by remembering that scar tissue is a dermal disorder that affects connective tissue. Therefore, we have to understand all components that make up the dermis. These include cells such as the fibroblast and connective tissue such as collagen and elastin. I often refer to the connective tissue network of the dermis as the fabric of skin, with a weave, nap and bias. The type of collagen that we have is intrinsic. This means we are born with a genetic predisposition to have skin with a delicate translucent fabric, such as silk, or one that is dense and more opaque. Surrounded and supported by glycosaminoglycans, collagen makes up 80% of the vertical weave, and elastin 5% of the horizontal. Each work in synergy with the other. The scar is a result of the body's repair mechanism after injury in many tissues. Scar tissue is composed of the same protein, collagen, as the tissue that it replaces. But the fibre composition of the protein is different. Instead of a random basket weave formation of the collagen fibres found in normal tissue, in fibrosis the collagen crosslinks and forms a pronounced alignment in a single direction. This collagen scar tissue alignment is usually of inferior functional quality to the normal collagen randomised arrangement. The collagen is denser and less elastic than normal tissue, and proliferation of this highly cross-linked collagen-abundant scar tissue often results in diminished physiological function. For example, scars in the skin are less resistant to ultraviolet radiation. Also, sweat glands and hair follicles do not grow back normally within scar tissues. Re-epithelialization phase in wound healing is vital, as you have just seen in the timeline on the previous slide. Epithelialization begins within the first 12 hours or longer, depending on the depth of the injury, and the complete replacement of the basement membrane will take as long as three weeks. The deposition of wound collagen will not begin until the two hemispheres of skin are restored. This means that the epidermal side of the derma junction must close, and this will happen as new epithelial cells migrate across the granulation bed to restore the epidermis. This brings us to the discussion of those acne scars caused by excoriation, when the tissue is being continually picked and re-epithelialization is not able to occur or to complete. If a wound becomes covered with epithelial tissue within two weeks, minimal fibrotic collagen will be deposited and no significant scar will form. If an injury takes longer than three to four weeks to close over, a scar will form. Scars form differently based on the location of the injury on the body and the age of the person who was injured. The worse the initial damage is, the worse the scar will be. There are numerous names used to describe the types of scarring and linked to the appearance of the scar. All scarring is divided into the following types according to their outside and histological structure. They are normotrophic and then atrophic, which is a group of three. The hypertrophic, keloid and contracture scars, including stretch marks, makes up a group called pathological scars. Looking for more information? More in-depth knowledge can be found at these three websites.